super fast rundown on the 2S uh, electrical system for the Hush Puppy. So starting with the battery box, of course we're running two Samsung INR 18650-25Rs in there. There's a longer video on this, but essentially the battery tray is connected to the XT60, which is sat in a groove on the housing, connects back to the tray, slides back into the box. Batteries fit in there, huge contacts will be thrown in there, all screws together, slides in the front like a power tool battery tray. Cool thing with this now is that disconnect at the front, you can slide that out, turn it over, slide it back in, and it goes back in in safe mode. There's no contact to the battery box. And there's no power at all. So you've got somewhere to store your battery within your blaster. You don't have to go and find somewhere else to stick it while you're traveling at all. The connection to the blaster itself is provided with an XT60 here. The bolt holds the XT60 in the little housing for it. And you can just see that the connector has been keyed to sit down into there around those bosses. Now that component is made from a Tornado Strike stock attachment point cover. The wiring from that passes up to get to the flywheels and will connect to another XT60 which will sit in there be able to disconnect that and then take the whole flywheel cage out as a modular unit. So that just fits nicely in behind there. Wiring at the other side of the circuit will pass down through the stampede thumb hole and up to the switches themselves. I'm just using standard large micro switches. There's nothing really special about them. I could have used um, MOSFETs. It's all the rage these days. But honestly, I've got so much space down here, I didn't need to. Um, I'd be running into other issues of where to put the MOSFETs after that, um, if I move them anywhere. Um, but these actually fitted really quite nicely. This is a strong arm um, grip. Strong arm trigger, just been uh, fiddled with to actually get it to fit up against these. You can see that there's just the tiniest little bit of uptake with the switch there before it engages the switch. The micro switches themselves have been housed into the shell using the existing bosses. So if I take that one off there, bring this a little closer, you can see there's the boss that that attaches down to. There's another boss down in here, which this one attaches to. And there's another boss under this big bolt here. This is actually a fire strike trigger. We've used this, just enlarge the hole a larger bolt through it which will now fit into that boss. So you can see the washer is actually being used to hold down this as well, that switch. Just loosen that off ever so slightly. It takes a little bit of getting used to with a pivoting trigger like that, but it actually works really well. It was just a quick explanation of the safety that we've rigged up for this as well. You see there's the pivoting trigger. I've cut out some of the uh, uh, strong arm switch here so that the fire strike switch can move up. And you can see I've cut out some of the fire strike as well so that it doesn't get engaged in that boss. It operates as a safety. You know, go nowhere.
the close up of the fuse box here you can see there's a 10 amp fuse in position there below the jam door where you can easily get to it change that out the fuse will be in line on the positive feed to the pusher motor so that if you get a jam or for whatever is the reason the pusher motor overheats uh, overcooks then that will go before things start blowing up in there the switch of course is toggling between live center and dead center for the pusher control uh, switch here for the cycle control this is just to make sure that I get the right tuning for uh, being able to avoid runaway firing with the the pusher box uh, again I'm not sure how this build is going to turn out and just having this there gives me a couple of options for later on just a close up of the pusher box area it's a rapid strike pusher box we've cut out in here all of this section to be able to fit in the rapid stroke pusher box underneath this web. That horizontal web is in exactly the right position to locate the top of the pusher box. The back of the, um, the shell itself and the demolisher is in exactly the right position to locate the box itself relative to the mag which will sit in here. All you have to do is cut out relatively accurately a big hole to take the box itself as long as it's got a couple of points underneath here which are holding it in place that web at the top and that end of the shell there will hold it in position so the pusher box itself has been minimized to fit within the demolisher shell the um, alignment lugs have been taken off the sides the screw ports have been taken off on the top and the bottom you won't be needing those of course there's no switch attached solidly to uh, a rapid stroke pusher box it's all in the um, fire control group block uh, which sits below that and that's attached to the shell so we need to rig up something which is going to sit onto this I'm just using a standard small uh, micro switch you can see that lever which passes up through there with the pusher arm fully retracted on the, uh, the rapid stroke pusher box that will just hold that arm gently. Uh, I might need to make a little bit more room in there for it but it should be okay. Here's one that we've rigged up earlier with a bracket to actually fit onto the box. This is made up out of a rapid stroke battery tray at the front there. The arm's been shortened so that uh, it fits in under the pusher arm. You can see that there's a dog in the back here which pushes on the lever as the pusher arm goes backwards and forwards so if we just fit that right up in there now where that's sitting it's fully retracted screw that in place I'm using very very short screws the front one's not so important but the back one is because it might hit the cog so when that pusher arm here is fully retracted that lever is pushed hard back up against the body of the switch. As the switch comes out, the lever comes out, the pusher arm is going forwards and at some point it's just going to disengage. The switch will turn off when that arm is completely vertical and then the pusher arm goes forwards, comes back again, engages the switch when that lever is fully vertical and then pushes hard up against the body again. That gives me a good amount of play here, good amount of travel for that switch to be on and activating the cycle control so that when the pusher arm is retracted it goes right okay that's where I should stay and pulls it back in. I wanted the uh, box itself the pusher box to be modular so you can take it in and out of the build uh, nice and easily so I've built a little bracket that will take XT30s uh, just as a size indicator there's an XT60 for scale. XT30s will be fine as far as amperage goes and they're nice and tiny to fit in this build. So this bracket, you can see how they slot in there much like the battery tray does. That bracket's made up out of a uh, stock attachment point from the back of the demolisher. That fits on in underneath here be really nice if somebody made a 
the 3D printed version of this whole thing. Using very short screws again so that the cogs aren't interfered with inside. Um, once I've worked out that all of this actually functions and is in the right position, I'll glue all of this down and get rid of these screws. I don't want any of the screws getting loose inside the innards and uh, getting into the electricals or other mechanical bits and pieces. The positive and negative from the motor will pass up through here and get held down if I just install these. Held down by the appropriately named hold down. So that positive and negative will attach to one of those XC30s and the other one will take the common and normally open from the switch. The normally closed, if I remember correctly, has uh, another negative going up to it to the um, to the XT30 uh, connector. So there it is. That all fits in here. Nice and snug. Um, there is enough room just between what I've left there. This is a rapid strike um, stock. Uh, if you're really good, you could actually fit that whole thing into a demolisher. You'd just have to move the switch up about a millimeter. There will be a little bit of squeeze trying to get the trigger to function under there, but it should actually work. Um, this whole setup will fit in a rapid strike, if that's where you want to go with that. There's going to be enough wire loose in here to go into the back of the XT30 connectors so that you can disconnect those with that on the fly. Just finishing off the update on the Hush Puppies electrical system before we wire up. So there's a voltmeter here made up out of a Night Finder butt cap. Fits on top of the two shell halves. This will get wired into the 2S power system. The switch for that will be located just here. There is the uh, tactical torch is the only part of the 3 volt power system which will sit on this side of the blaster shell. We just undo this. And that just pulls straight out the front. You can see that it's been minimized from its original format here. The battery's been taken out. There's a piece of dowel with a rod now making a contact in the very middle and the earth is earthed to the body itself. On the other shell half you've got the targeting laser, very small item which has been integrated into the front here between the two shell segments. You can see the size of it fits quite nicely on top of this screw boss here. It's really only big enough in there for something like that laser. The torch is much better on the right hand side. At the front You've got the switches, which will switch the laser on, full on, and the torch on, full on, and then you've got what will be a thumb switch, which is toggled back here between the torch and the laser, and completely off for the 3 volt electrical system. Um, 3 volt provided by two double A's at the moment. We could swap to a uh, single rechargeable. Um, in which case uh, there's a voltmeter for that, um, just so you don't want to run down uh, rechargeable completely. What we've got at the top here is a little bit of a redundant feature. This was to be the power outlet which would go to the, um, the red dot site. But I've actually swapped the red dot site from the non-functional uh, Nerf one to a sleeper scope here. So it's still using the Nerf modulus scope cover, the, just the shell of it. But I've incorporated a proper functioning red dot scope. So it just kind of finishes off the, the usefulness of it all really. Um, and there's a quick release Picatinny on the bottom which has been converted to Nerf rail just with these aluminium components here. I figured it's going to be much more useful to be able to swap it onto Nerf stuff rather than have to convert everything that I've got to Picatinny.